Hi guys, uh, welcome to my channel. Not posted for a little bit, well, obviously I've got to try and fit them in my work and I've not been too great at work. Um, but I've been asked to cut some shapes out of wood. Yes, the material of the devil. Um, as you probably guys watched my other channels before, this indeed is my plasma table. Now, when I actually made this, um, if I look up there, that's my floating head. I made it um, with the mortars and everything else so it could do wood and it will cut probably 16 mil, 20 mil ply uh, in one go. Uh, but obviously we're not going to do that. We're going to be using a fine bit today, one of the cheapo Amazon bits. And I've been asked to cut these little things out. Now I could cut them out on the bandsaw but can't be asked today. So I'm going to show you guys how the plasma cutting metal can actually cut wood now all I've done before obviously I put the, the phone down and set everything up is this little bracket is obviously just made out of plywood uh, glued and screwed uh, well well solid enough when I get around to it I'll make metal ones but again when I get around to it generally speaking every time I do come in here I'm making stuff um, obviously if you see my Instagram page a lot of metal metal badges and signs uh, mainly footy, especially with footy season coming up, just unindated with them. But I'm going to show you guys today um, how I'll do the wood. Now, again, the software will be the same because once I set up, I'm going to go through obviously Vectric. And again, if you've watched any of my other videos, I also use Vectric um, for the plasma. And that's why I use Vectric because I can cut the wood straight from Vectric and it'll give me an example how it cuts. Plasma wise, do everything exactly the same with Vectric, uh, but I just export it to SVG and then that SVG then will go into Sheet Cam. So you just get around and keep going in, in and out of different software, you, you kind of get used to it. And I just find Vectric, uh, Aspire Vectric is, is bang on for what I want to do. So what we'll do, um, all I've done with this, guys, is I've emptied the water table, but I do anyway. Um, it's only in more than probably much two days and, and, I, and I tend to drain it. I'm not into that green fluid for a man and a little, as you see. I've only got a little bit of a man cave. If I leave water in the table, um, condensation is quite bad, especially through winter. So that, that's a no-no. So I'll tend to empty it every couple of days, clean it out, scrub it out. It's only 10 minutes of a job and it's, it, it's just clean. So... Under the table is obviously empty. I've just put some, I think it's 8mm ply um, on that one. Now again, the problem I've got with this, which you've got to be careful of, is it's just been stood up there, so it's, it isn't level. Now, hence, that's why I've got clamps here to clamp it in, and I've got my little anvil at the back to flatten it. Now, as you can see, the one I'm going to be cutting out of, because I think it's the, the sheets are four... I'll get one out shortly. The 400 mil by 400 mil. So what I'll tend to do, I don't want to damage. I don't want to damage this. So I'm going to screw another piece there. So obviously when we cut through, um, we're not damaging this board, and, and it'll straighten off. And I think it, this this lot cost it's about nine quid. Uh, it'll last me about three months, so it'll pay for itself. So I just change it out when it curls so much. Now obviously if you're engraving, you've got to be careful because. Obviously, this as well is metal engraving, so it's got to be flat. Now, obviously, if it's not flat, you'll get it'll be deep in one side and not the other as the tramming. Now, obviously, when I built this CNC, uh, it trams absolutely bang on because it cuts within 0.01 of a mil, something like that, and it is bang on with the wood because uh, on the plasma you've got the kerf to worry about. So obviously with these washers and adjustable screws, I can actually lift each end up anyway, but because it's set for the plasma, I don't want to be I don't want to be messing about and then having to set everything up, the torch eye control and everything else. So what I'll tend to do is if I'm engraving, I'll put I'll put the little piece of wood on here and I'll just put a routing bit just to flatten it to mill it. Now once I mill that area out left and right then I know it's level, then me engraving piece will obviously go on go on there. We'll get through to engraving. I might, I might, might do it tonight actually because I'm not I've got no metal stuff on today and I can't can't be bother filling the table. I'm back at work tomorrow and it means cleaning it all out. So I might do a couple of vids today. 
So let us just get set up. Let me put the blanking piece on and then we'll jump on the PC um, and we'll cut these little shapes with the wood. See you soon, guys. Right, guys. So I've took a screenshot, uh, but I want to want to set the material like the material size or whatever. So what I do, measure the screw, wide as pi, its leg, uh, to its foot there, one seventy. Pretty much top of his ear, one forty. So what we'll do, we go on to the trick on the here, so I can make guys show you what I'm kind of about to do um, so we create a new file up here what I'll pretty much do I'll change that because right, it's 140 that now once we once once we set the dimensions the whole school now can fill the sheet um, I mean, all will be that. That's what I tend to do. So I can I can sort of scroll that to the end. It's not critical. I mean, obviously, if it was a critical part, we'd put the measurements in. But the kids are not going to know the difference between one forty and one forty two point three eight. So that's easiest in this occasion. So what we'll do? Wing import the bitman. So we'll scribble there. thinking about it there we go up, up. so what we'll do um, we'll try to just take the outline so I'll use this button here to transform click preview and we, we get the main image here so I'm kind of happy with that we can tidy that we can tidy the nodes up obviously once I've got this format and anyone wants any more cutting we I can keep the format um, so what we'll do we'll apply We'll apply that, close that, get rid of my picture. So we're left with this here. Now, like I said, all oh, bit, bits of shitty ends there. So we'll ungroup, we'll ungroup everything. So we just need, obviously, the school. So we can delete. We can delete everything else. Mm -hmm. Or you can obviously select, I mean I'm going through it in case you've never used Vectric before, I can actually select select it and put it on another layer. Um, but for argument's sake, let's just get rid of all the shit. So so that's our little that's our little scroll there. So we call Nod Edit Mod. Now as you guys have followed my Plasma ones, or if you do, you know what I mean. You can have a look at them. Uh, on its rounded tail, yeah, black is bad. Um, they're kind of straight curves, so yeah, you, you can you, your machine can so called compensate. Look, so many cuts in front. Fair enough, but for me, it has to be as smooth as possible. That so, if it's not a right angle and it's a curve, I don't want I don't want any any black in there. So what we can do with Vectric. If we select uh, fit curves to selected vectors, now we can change to Bezier curves here. Now if we preview, boom, straight away you can see uh, it's pretty much took a lot of those out. So we've, I know we've got a thing up here, so let me just have a look. No, then it mode. So we can zoom in there. Uh, See there, that's gone tits up. So I can delete that point. Make a smooth point there. Ooh. Yeah, now it'll cut there, but the, the, the thing is as well, we'll delete them. Delete that one. Make it make it nice now that's like I said that's okay with with plasma though you've got to be careful because obviously that little double one there if it'll see it as um, I think it's an open offset I think it is and sometimes it can be a right old pain to sort out so let's get rid of a little thing on his paw there again we can get rid of that 
uh, and we can straighten them. So I'll change that to smooth, change that to smooth. In fact, we can get rid of that. Put a point there. Not so quickly you tidy stuff up a little bit here. Not having that. That just works with a smooth. Um, like I said, yeah, generally speaking, I'll do I'll do this in the in the living room on the other laptop, so I'm not just sat in the garage doing this. Uh, get rid of that one. Point. Oops, okay. I can shift them in. Again, it's only a bit of a toy, but um, oh, look at that lot! I'll show you to get rid of this lot as well. So if we click on. Get rid of that one. Now, rather than mess around and keep deleting the points, what I tend to do, um, example, we'll cut it there. Cut vector. Cut vector. Yeah, and take the full lot out. Now, what I can do is close vector, smooth curve, boom. And then we can obviously add a point in there, make it a bit more squirrel like. It saves, it saves you from messing around with all the individual nodes. Click on that. And that's it. So we've got pretty much school there. So what we'll do, that's our block. So we'll come out of... So we can hold shift down. If you hold shift down, it'll just keep everything in proportion. So we'll... Very much. And there we go, guys. So what I'll do is export that. First of all, um, export to SVG. Import a scroll. Close that down. So if we go back in here as another bit of a demonstration, guys, what we can do, create a new file. That's our file before. So let's just import a little scroll. We can import as vector now. That's what we did. So you just have the scroll now. We know bits of, bits of mess. Um, now, what's quite good, you can actually see it. You can actually see it before we cut it out. So... If we go to tools, cut out on here. Now we've got two passes, We're not going to do that with two passes with that bit, not a chance. Um, so what we'll do is cut depth again. Start depth is zero because we'll set a, a drill bit on the level. It's only, I think it's six mil, so we need to go six, six point five there. Make sure it goes through. Edit passes, we'll do quite a lot actually. Um, do up to eight, I think, not point, uh, not point eight. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go really slow because it's mega, mega fine bit to do the spikes um, on the edge hog. So, yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll go, we'll risk a seven. So you've got the climb cut, outside right, inside right. That's obviously if you want an inside cut, outside cut. We can cut on the line. Again, it's not mega critical, so we can cut on the line there. Um, we'll have a climb cut, and then we'll add tabs. Now, what these do, guys, if you've not done the wood, is obviously if, I, if we're cutting a shape out, when it gets near the end, the shape starts floating around in the hole. Once it floats around, it gets snagged, the, the, 
the machine will just snap the bit. It doesn't matter what size it is, whether it's a 12 mil drill bit, it'll just snap it. So we'll just include some tabs. Um, thickness, if it's 4 mil, we'll have on the I need one mil thick to be fair. Edit tabs. So we can put them in here. And we'll have four there. There are tabs, so then we can we'll calculate it. Tell me it'll cut through. And that's what it's going to look like so you can even do a video of it so if we speed wise and that's what it's going to look so if we cut the background out ah it's got tabs in I'm going to say without the tabs it's telling me it's all background so we can't do that also I'll disappear but you can see the tabs there to stop it in and that's it so right guys we're back on Mac 3 um, I've just covered the top of the screen only because it's a bit of dust um, I'll say not the greatest because I do welding in here as well so I've got to be really like clean that's why when you look around my little shed it looks like I don't do anything I do it's just that I've, I've got to keep everything clean now obviously you'd have different profiles with Mac, with Mac 3 now as you can see we've got four axis on this one uh, because it's set up to Mac Mill so obviously my Mac Mill um, and the plasma they both have the same steps because obviously it's the same machine but there is slight differences because obviously the the bit is different than the curve um, but we line it up exactly the same so what I'm going to do I'm going to show you we click on this here and <coughs> we click now on the router part bring that back so we can mess around in here so if I basically Man, the screw had plenty, plenty of room on this one. When you want two, two shapes. So we call it just so we can miss the screw. That's all. Call it, call it there. And then what we'll do is we'll, I mean, not going to use the points. We can, we can eyeball it up because the depth of cut, I've made it half, uh, half a mil anyway. So we've got a bit of play. So so that's pretty, mu that's pretty much touching, guys. So that's ready to go. Right guys, I've just oovered up a bit, I uh, just get it off the rails, that's the gap. And that's our little wooden scroll. That's it, nice and uh nice clean cut for the plasma table. Um, and we'll see how well we did the size wise. And this is just eyeing it up. So there you go, not too far off. I'm sure the kids won't uh, recognise that at all. Um, and that's how you cut wooden objects out on your CNC plasma table. Thanks for watching, guys.